What's the next account that I shared with you that I'd like to see you open? An index fund. Right. So let's go back to, okay, you went from Windsor mm -hmm. and then an opportunity arose for you. Yes, there was a pizzeria next to Windsor and I used to go there every day and I would see security always in there and they would be, I would talk to them and they'd be like, you should come work here, be a dispatcher and it'd be $12 an hour. And I was like, making eight twenty five, twelve dollars $12 sounded amazing. I was like, sold, what do I have to do? So I got in, I started working there. I still work there. <laughs> End of the story is I still work there. I've gotten a couple of raises over the t over the years. And now I make fifteen dollars an hour. Right, yeah. right. No, well, so I think the lesson here is that um, one, obviously, at eight twenty five, you everybody wants to make more money. Um, but an opportunity arose, and I think life is nothing but opportunities. But recognizing when they do come, because I think a lot of people. Um, opportunities come up, but they don't recognize that it's an actual opportunity, right? And then that you should take advantage of any and all opportunities, right? Because we're going to talk about one of these other opportunities that arose that you took advantage of. So, okay, so you're working, you're doing your thing, you're still living at home with, with mom and me, and um, you're cruising along, and then you're like, you still wanted to move out, and then what did we talk about after that? About getting your first place. Like what what I was going to do, like wanted to buy a place. Yeah. Remember we talked to the conversation about buying not a house because I knew that you wouldn't be able to qualify for a full house, but a condo. Yeah. Yeah. Because you were still here at the house and you had shared with me, you had saved, you had a pretty decent amount saved, right? Mm -hmm. And you saved so much money because you really don't have, have no bills. Just your basics. I had you start paying your phone bill yourself, but I take care of everything else. So before we could buy a house, one of the things that we had to do was to get your credit established. Remember that? Yeah. Talk to the people how you, because I'm going to jump forward and then jump back is you bought your condo all on your own 100%. I mean, mom and I were the representing agents, but you bought it in order to do that. You have to have enough credit to do that and money. And so when I taught you the credit lesson, Explain, share with the audience here the credit lesson I taught you and how you were able to build your credit over time. So when it came time to buy your condo, you qualified. Uh, well, I started off with just a credit card and you taught me to use it on, well, basically everything. Don't As soon as I got a credit card, you said, don't use your debit card anymore. So I started to use that. My limit rose. I got another credit card. Did the same thing, got another credit card, but I'm just, I self-disciplined myself to spend within my means, even though, you know, I have this limit of so much money. I only spend as much as I know I can actually spend that I can actually pay back. So when you do that, plus how many years of credit that you have, which also really helps, that by the time I was 20, then it was, it was good. Yeah. No, we taught you, remember, you remember your very first credit card? Uh-huh. I still have. So, but how did you get that card? Because you didn't have any credit. I think it was like, it came in the mail because. No, it was a, it's called a secured card. Remember uh -huh. we had to put money on there. A secured credit card is when you put the money up first. And so that's how your first one was. I said, you don't have any credit, so nobody will give you one. So they always start with, okay, get a secured credit card for typically two, maybe $300 you'll get a secured card. Uh -huh. And then you had that card for roughly four months and then they extended you credit. You didn't have to have the secured credit. You didn't have to give them money. But the reason we did that is because I showed you how to, okay, you're going to give them the $200. I think it was just 200. You're going to give them the $200, but then you're going to start to pay for your gas and your lunch or whatever on your card. And, and then I had you pay it off like every two weeks. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And I said that you had to pay these things off. You can't just pay the minimum because it was, yeah. they're small anyway at the time. And then I remember, I remember when you said, Hey dad, in the mail, they said that, and they gave, they gave me a $500 credit limit. You remember that? Uh -huh. Right. And how long do you remember how long you had that $500 credit limit for? Mm, a couple of months, maybe six yeah. months or something. And they raised it to a thousand, a thousand. Yeah. But they did that because, like you were saying, exactly, 
you were doing what? Just spending your, every, the money you were going to spend anyway, mm-hmm. right? Gas, your food, your phone bill. I don't know that you had any of the bills in that really. Uh, but you were just spending that couple of hundred bucks a month and paying it right back before the bill was actually due. Mm-hmm. So that showed a pattern of responsibility with your card. So refresh my memory on your second credit card. When we, when did you get your second one? I got my, actually, I remember it was September of 2018. You were? 19. 19. So probably what, six months, full year after the first one? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Almost, almost a year. And then that one gave you how much of a limit, like right out of the gate? Oh, I think a thousand. Thousand. Yeah. So now you got two credit cards, a thousand each, mm-hmm. two thousand bucks, mm-hmm. but you don't spend anywhere near two thousand dollars. Right. But do you remember the reason I had you get that second card? No. So you have two cards, thousand dollar limit each, two thousand dollars of limit. And remember the 30% rule? Yes. 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 Explain the 30% rule. Only spend 30% of whatever your limit is. That don't, that's. That's there. maximum, right? That's and it's not the limit of each card; it's thirty percent of total. So oh. now you were able to, if you have two thousand dollars worth of credit cards, thirty percent is six hundred dollars. You could spend up to six hundred and not damage your credit in any way, okay? Which you don't really spend that money, so you were okay. So you kept building, you kept building, and then I know you got your credit score to a certain point which I knew qualified for a certain card because then we started to look at cards with that had um, the cards with the benefits, right? Mm -hmm. So what was the card that gave you your first benefit? My discover card. Yeah. Yeah. I love discover. They're one of the ones that give the most money cash back. They're a little harder to get than some of the other ones because you definitely have to have minimum 720 credit score to get that discover card. But I think now that's it. That's just the three cards you have, right? I have an Apple credit card too. Oh, I remember that. That's more of a convenience card. And that one's new. And I don't know a lot about it other than, you know, it's there. But now you're just a little over 21. And how much money do you have if you add all four credit cards up together worth of limits? Uh, Maybe seven or 8,000, I think. Seven or 8,000. Yeah. So now you build up enough credit. Obviously, you don't need anything. But if your card were to break down... You know, you could put it on that if you didn't have it. But I know you've been a really good saver. Let's go through the process of when you said, hey, let's buy the, I, I, Dad, I found a condo. I want to buy it. Do you remember how that process went? Yes, it's a long process. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? Don't scare people. <laughs> no, it's not a scary process. It's just, it, it takes some time. Uh, but first, you have to uh, apply for it so that they, you know, you have to tell them, the the loan company right yeah the, the apply l- for how much money you make how, your credit you know how long you've been at your job you have to be at your job for two years yeah so it was it was funny so they told us what you qualified for and then we went shopping mm-hmm. but being that I'm in real estate and I flip homes what type of home did I tell you that I wanted you to find a condo besides that like oh. a like a renovated condo is that what you yes mean? yeah. Yeah. yeah, we wanted to definitely, I wanted to make sure that that faith went out there. She had enough money to buy the home, but not a lot of excess cash to a lot of people. When you buy a house, you know, you got to go in there and fix this, that, or whatever. And you could spend another thousands of dollars, you know, repairing anything. So I said, you, you keep looking. And when you find one that's been fully renovated and it's in your price point and obviously location was key, um, that's the one we'll look look out seriously. Mm-hmm. So then I, I remember you called me, Dad, I found it, I found it, I found it. I said, what'd you find? And then you showed me. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I for weeks, I spent every day on Zillow just looking at all these condos in the area that I wanted. So when I found the one that I really liked, I was so excited. And I was like, we have to go see it, we have to go see it. We went there, I fell in love with it, and I was like, I need it sold, I'm moving in. <laughs> So then we started the process. So for some of you guys out there, think about this. Here's a 20-year-old young lady who's working at a job that makes $15 an hour. Now she was there two years. And at the same timeline, built her credit up from zero to where are you sitting at now? About like $745, $750. Yeah, 750 
which is more than enough to buy a house. So you did that all on your own. I said, okay. And then we found it. Okay, now it's time to buy it. Well, lucky for you, mom and dad are real estate agents. So we went out there and mom and I are representing agents on there. And we got you involved in a, a down payment assistance program because you're a first time home buyer. Mm -hmm. How much money did that save you? Thousands. Thousands. Yes. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and break down the numbers if you're okay with it. Okay. Okay. So the condo was $164,000, right? Two bedroom, two bath, fully renovated. This thing was gone through from, from top to bottom floors, the whole new kitchen cabinets, bathroom cabinets, tiled showers. I mean, a very nicely done place. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, that's why I felt good about, okay, this is a good purchase. You'll go ahead with that. And then we got you involved in the down payment assistance program because you qualify because you're a first time home buyer, right? Which means that they put down the down payment. You don't have to. Now that doesn't mean that you need zero money to buy a house because you still need money. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what kind of money that you needed? Like the closing costs? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still going to have to pay for closing costs. Typically on whatever you're buying, it's about one and a half percent, right? So Faith was able to get in there, $164,000 call, no, get the down payment assistant program to do the down payment of the three and a half percent. Then she had closing costs. Now we went through there. Can you remember what was the total money out of your pocket to buy this place? Um... No, maybe like 2000 I think. You were like 2500 Yeah. So for $2,500, and she was prepared though. She had $10,000. She's like, no, I can, I have the down payment, but I'm like, I says, matter, matter of fact, we talked about it because there is a difference of a monthly payment if you put the money down yourself or you do the down payment assistance program. Remember that conversation? Yes. How'd that go? Uh, we're very iffy. I... Wanted to pay less monthly, but then you said save all your money now and just pay a little bit more every month instead of, you know, paying it all for the down payment. So that's what we decided then is to save, keep all my money that I have now and just pay a little bit more every month. Yeah. So the difference was, I remember the numbers because I'm a numbers guy. I remember all the numbers. So the, the difference was if it had Faith put down the actual down payment money in cash and her closing costs, it would have, and she would have been out of pocket about almost $9,000. And I says, well, Faith, if we do the down payment assistance program, you're only going to be out of pocket $2,500. And the extra amount of the payment was $65 per month. And I says, well, let's do the math because you're not going to live there alone. You're going to have a roommate who basically is going to pay half of your mortgage, right? I says, I'd rather you stay cash rich than be cash poor and equity rich, right? Mm -hmm. Because we never know what, you know, life is going to hand to us. And it's always better to have cash put away, cash working, right? So I thought it was a good move on at this particular juncture of where you're at because you really didn't have any bills, you know, your car's paid for and you don't have no debt and that's why you're able to qualify. So just for you listening out there, she qualified three factors. One, job, two years. Two, had the credit, which was at the time like 730 or something. Um, and three, that um, she could qualify for that down payment assistance program and save her cash. That, that's what made the equation really work well. So here you are, 20 years old, got your first condo. And I think back, one, obviously a very, very proud dad that you had the uh, work ethic to save and the mindset of money and how it works to be able to get yourself that because you're going to be one of very, very, very few people that will never pay rent. Most people pay rent for a while before they're able to buy their first house, whether it's a condo or a single family home, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, so your money from the age of 20, we fast forward and you're 40 or 50 years old, you're like, my money's always been working for me in my life. I've never paid rent and thrown money away. Right. And I think that's a phenomenal fee. I'm very happy, very happy. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here.
If you want to watch the whole podcast episode, then go ahead and click right here. Okay, um, do me a favor. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you want to hit the notification bell, you hear, you'll get notified every time we release a new video out for you, whether it's the clip or the whole podcast. So hope you get a lot of value. And I'll see you guys on the next one.